And welcome to this episode of Encountering Jesus. My name is Cindy Johnston and I'm your host. You are listening to my book, Stairway to Heaven's Door. This book is copyrighted 2023 and all rights are reserved. No part of this book may be reproduced without permission. I hope you enjoy this podcast. Now here's the book. Section 1. Chapter 1 Extra Jar of Oil Dear Precious One, This book is a companion guide to my book Heaven's Door. When I first published Heaven's Door, I found those reading it long to have their own divine encounters with Jesus. I understood this yearning as I felt the same when reading books about someone else's divine experiences. Initially I knew that Jesus wanted me to write Heaven's Door to help others see what is possible, but I could see that many had no idea how to begin having their own times with Jesus. This is when I started an e-course explaining how I began having these encounters. I also shared what Jesus taught me and how to have these experiences with Him. Soon, I realized that everyone is at a different place with their spiritual life and their ability to navigate the internet and my e-course. This is when I decided I needed a book. I know many of you are happy with reading on a device and that is amazing. But just as many of you enjoy holding a book, a book is substantial and it can be written in. A book is easy to use with no need for a computer or a device. I found Jesus was as excited about this prospect as I was. He and I have had a good time in making this book, although I have found I'm not the best team player. Still, I have grown through all of this and I cannot wait for you to enjoy what he and I have put together for you. Daily Struggles I have written Heaven's Door and Stairway to Heaven's Door Book 1 and 2, all to encourage you that these experiences with Jesus are for everyone. But, in my times of ministry, I have seen that many doubt they will have these encounters. I want you to know that so far, I have had an incredible success rate. It should be obvious that this isn't anything I could have done on my own. Because I know how amazing all this sounds, I want to share something with you. I struggle daily with many difficult battles. I know we all do, but I didn't want you to think that I had it easy. I often struggle just to stay on track and get things done. I marvel at what he has accomplished through me, and I know this has very little to do with me. When I'm at my most difficult places he will keep guiding me along with words of encouragement. While I was working on this book he would tell me what stories to include and how to lay them out. He has also inspired me with a great cloud of witnesses who have cheered me along through my writing. I will talk a bit more about this later in the book. I share all this because I want to be clear. Jesus is everything to me. And the most amazing part of it all is we are everything to him. That is why we each have such a beautiful and special place with him. You are extremely precious to Jesus. This is why he has asked me to share my stories and help others to meet with him in the secret place. If you will take the time to read this book along with my book Heaven's Door, I believe Jesus will use them to help you understand that these encounters are for you. Once we remove the roadblocks and childlike faith can blossom then these encounters will happen easily enough. I have seen this time and time again so I know what Jesus can do. Knowing Jesus personally, there is nothing more important in this life than developing our personal relationship with Jesus. Most of us know this, but even so we do not pursue Jesus with our whole heart. I think this is because we do not understand the intense battle that rages inside of us. In Romans 7 verses 21 to 25 Paul writes about the battle between our flesh man and our spirit man. Many of us do not fully understand that this battle is real, intense, and ongoing. Personally, 
I often find it very puzzling that I will have an amazing time with Jesus one day and the next be terribly resistant to spending time with him. This can cause me to be very grieved and disappointed in myself. We simply cannot give in to these feelings of unworthiness. Pressing past all this and purely trusting Jesus like a child allows him to make it right. He will do all the heavy lifting in making these encounters happen with us. We see in 2 Timothy 2 verse 13 ESV, If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. I have found that Jesus longs for these encounters with us more than we do with him. If we will make the time and place for them, he will help us to overcome all obstacles that keep us from him. Of all the people, places, and things I have ever experienced I have found my time with Jesus is the most rewarding. His beauty and sweetness are beyond description. Nothing is more delightful than feeling his divine goodness in my heart. I know without a doubt that you will be blessed forever in making extra time with Jesus as you learn to encounter him. Extra jar of oil. I'd love to say that I'm always very eager to take time for Jesus each day. But as I said before, if we do not understand that this is part of the battle with our flesh, then we will feel guilty. I want to help you up and over that obstacle that tries to block us from doing more with Jesus. And I think this parable about the wise and foolish virgins is very helpful in realizing that we can do more to prepare for Jesus' return. Before I started having these divine encounters with Jesus the idea of preparing for the rapture was a bit vague. Most of us can come up with all types of things that we think will help. But after having these divine encounters I have found that there is one thing that will help above all the others. Jesus actually wants his bride to be ready for him and I believe he is showing us through the events in the world that we need to spend more time with him. And isn't that how the parable ends? Jesus tells the unwise ladies that he doesn't know them. I believe the most important way to prepare for Jesus is to not be merely acquainted with who he is, but to know him well. That is what this e-course is all about. Jesus has shown me that as we make time for him daily, we are storing up that extra jar of oil that we will need as we wait for him as our bridegroom king. Matthew 25 verses 6 to 13. At midnight the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. Later the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But the bridegroom replied, Truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Galilean Wedding Traditions I recently saw a documentary about Galilean wedding rituals that brought this parable to life. Jesus and his disciples were all from this region which meant they were each very familiar with the unusual wedding traditions of this place and time. As we read the Gospels with these amazing traditions in mind then we can better understand the deeper layers of meaning that Jesus was sharing with his men. This is not just for the disciples though. It is for all of us who are preparing for the wedding feast and being with Jesus forever as his bride. I would highly recommend you watching this as it will give you some clarity as to why it is very important to see Jesus as our bridegroom king and we his precious brides. Let me stop to clear up a misconception that causes many of us to take a huge step back from thinking of Jesus as our bridegroom. In John 6 verse 63 Jesus says, The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. Jesus is interested in us coming into divine union with him in our hearts and spirit, not our physical bodies. I believe this scripture about him being the bridegroom and we his bride is a spiritual metaphor for the divine union talked about in John 17. If you will remember Jesus prays for the disciples and everyone who would come to know him through the disciples to all come into this divine union with him. Here is what Jesus prays, that all of them may be one, Father, 
just as you are in me and I am in you. John 17 21 am then Jesus says a little further in the prayer, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. John 17 22 b 23 a. When Jesus prays for all believers to be one with him as he is one with the Father he is revealing the end game. This divine union with Jesus is the most precious and pure connection anyone can ever have with him. It is done heart to heart and spirit to spirit and the most powerful point of our relationship with God. It's hard to understand, but as we are connected to the very heart of Jesus then we are wrapped in all the splendor and power of the universe. But even more amazing is that this glorious and beautiful union is what we were created for and beyond description. Taking steps to be wise. We see that in Revelation 2 verse 4 that Jesus warns the church in keeping their love burning bright for him by returning to the things they did when they first knew him. I believe the difference for those who are wise and those who are foolish will come down to that extra jar of oil. I believe that extra jar of oil can only be obtained through our deep and personal relationship with the bridegroom king himself. I think we all want to be that wise maiden who takes decisive steps to knowing her savior and her king personally and intimately. The bottom line is that Jesus is making it abundantly clear that knowing him personally is the key to everything. We see this in Revelation 3 verses 1 to 5 when Jesus warns the church to wake up. And then in Revelation 3 verses 14 to 22 where he warns the church to not be lukewarm. We want to be doing all we can to grow close to Jesus and experience John 17 as we allow our hearts to come into union with his. These are all the many reasons I wanted to make this book. I believe this is the time we will need to press into knowing him more and to collect that extra jar of oil. As we come to experience him then we will also fall in love with him and desire to know him even more. This will all happen as we learn about who we are in Christ. Our identity is the key that unlocks it all. We will talk more about being the children of God in the next chapter. Thank you for listening to my podcast. This book, Stairway to Heaven's Door Book One, is part of a series. The first book, was called Heaven's Door, and the book after this one is Stairway to Heaven's Door, book two. And all of these books are on Amazon, so you can purchase them, and they most of them are on YouTube, so you can listen. All of these books have been written to help you learn how to encounter Jesus. I want to thank you again for listening. Have a great day. Bye now.